Keith, my start now. Hey, everybody, my culinary cohorts. This is the Grateful Chef, Chef Eric, doing a little impromptu live tonight. No fancy lights, no anything. Just hey, let's do the tail end of my dinner live. Why not? So I'm, I got to dump this pasta because I don't want it to overcook. And I'm going to show you why. I am making a recipe that is not my recipe. It is actually a recipe I found on the worldwide menu, I'll call it. And um, it's pretty cool. I'm doing it for the first time, so let's do it together, right? So I got the pasta here. I'm draining it very well. This is ziti. This is called honeycomb macaroni with a porky cream sauce. So what could be bad about that? So I've made these, uh, these zitis uh, just shy of al dente. And I'm going to put them in a bowl. Watch this. So I, of course, made most of this in advance. So um, you won't see the whole thing, but I will be posting pictures to accompany this post. So here I have the ziti. And this is what I bought. You want this flat cut ziti. You don't want the ziti with the pointy ends, right? I bought the longest ones that they had. It's pretty cool. I'll show you what we're going to do. In this pot right here, I have the porky cream sauce. This is made with pancetta and milk and cream and uh, some spices. Okay, and we're going to Come add. Look. Yep. look at that. Yum. Okay, we're going to add a third of a cup to the pasta. Just so we can mix it up. Putting this back on the stove. Got a little wave from Julie. Hi, Julie. And of course, I'm reading the recipe because I never made it before. So, yeah, cook it, add the one third of a cup, and this is a generous cup and a half of shredded Gouda cheese. That's all going in. All right, I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna glove up because I am touching food, and I'm gonna mix this up. So, what's, gonna, what's happening right now is the pasta being still hot. It is actually soaking up a lot of that uh, cream sauce that we just put in. And you basically just want to get this nice and melty. Just like that. You can see the, pasta, the uh, cheese that I did sh shred very fine. It's just kind of melting in there and you're making a nice little paste. There's close. absolutely no liquid left in here. So it's, all, it's soaked into the pasta. You can see it on my gloves. I'm going to wipe it off. Hey, Alex. Hi, Alex. All right, now, over to the stove. I have a six inch ring mold. This was actually like a little fine mesh strainer that I bought at Marshall's. I took the mesh off because I needed a six inch mold. So basically I have that in a nonstick pan and I have put a tablespoon of butter in the ring mold, as you can see. Let me get my little whisk. A teaspoon of flour, just regular all-purpose flour. We're basically making a little roux in the bottom here. I'm coming in. Stir it around. You kind of want to keep it within the mold. I'm going to cook off some of the rawness of the flour. Do you want to tell folks what you're making? Yes, this is the recipe. And I'm going to tell you what the source of the recipe is. It is from a website called LadyandPups.com. Lynn's niece sent me a picture of this and it looks absolutely amazing. LadyandPups.com. Check out their website because they have some amazing, um, she has amazing uh, recipes on there. So um, where am I on this recipe? And of course I'm using the Paprika app that I talked to you guys about yesterday. It's awesome. So. Yeah, so I have just stirred in, whisked in, made a little bit of a roux here. A little bit of butter, a little bit of flour. And then you just gotta shut the flame off. And then we're gonna start to put the ziti macaroni inside the mold until it's completely filled up. This is gonna be fun. It's like uh, playing, playing with that, that stuff that, I don't even know what you call it, that phloem. All right, so here we've got, I want to kind of grab the pasta and I want to make it all together. I'm going to together. come on close. Yeah, come on close. And we've got El Nino and Jeff Johnson. And Hello, El Nino. And 
Paul has joined us this evening as well too. All Paul right. Tony. Hi, Paul. So basically, what you want to do is you want to kind of yeah. fill this whole thing with pasta, which sounds easier than it is. This is fun to watch you. Who? Who said that? Not me. Oh. <laughs> Just. So we're basically lining the six, six inch mold with the pasta. And the idea is that we're gonna fill this entire thing and see how this works. You know, it's funny, there's so many recipes out there that look so great and then we go and try them and there's things they didn't tell us like how difficult it is to actually put together. Stand up noodles. Yeah, stand up noodles. So. Again, it's key that you make these noodles like just shy of al dente. Alex McFarlane, he said, I'm so looking forward to watching you do this because I would find it so frustrating. Hello, Alex. Well, maybe that's why they call me the grateful chef. The patient chef? I am always grateful here. All right, I'm not always grateful. Don't get me wrong, I am human. All right. Okay, I just really want to eat the noodles out of the dish. Yeah, I mean, they look good already. A little of the cream sauce. So I'm trying to grab clumps of it like that so we're not doing it individually. And you basically just want to fill this thing up. And hopefully all these noodles are relatively the same size. We also have Chris Howard with us. Hi, Chris. My condolences to you again, my friend. Awesome. Sean hints, maybe try standing the ring mold. Hmm? He said maybe try standing the ring mold. You mean like a uh, like a firewood log holder? <laughs> First thing that I thought of. Now, this is going along well now that I've figured out that if you pick up clumps, just make them in the general direction the same. And you really just want to... That is going much faster than I thought it would. Yeah, me too. Thankfully, because, you know... Who wants to watch you stand up? Man, right, individually standing up one piece of pasta at a time does not make for great, I'll call it, television. But you really want to pack it in there. So once you fill it, you just keep sliding them in there until you can't fit any in there anymore. And Scott Brodhagen... Hello, Scott. Give you a nice big thumbs up. Wow, that is going fast. Awesome. Yep, so we're just... Al Al Alex, would you go for this now? Come on, Alex. It's not see, that hard. Since you see, I, I think at Marmitons, you guys should go for this. Seriously. You're at Marmiton. Um, can you tell folks what are ha what's happening again? Sure. So this is a recipe I found online. It's been floating around the internet. You know, I'll often try them. You know, and... Uh, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I mean, this one looked really good, um, so I really wanted to give it a give it a whirl. And what are you making then? This is called the title of the recipe is honeycomb macaroni, and you'll see why it's called honeycomb macaroni uh, with a porky cream sauce. And I guess they had me at porky cream sauce because what could be bad about that? So the recipe calls for guanciale or pancetta so guanciale is a is a very similar to pancetta it's made with the jowls of the, the the pig so it's that real fatty you know on the cheeks um i was unable to find guanciale i went to a source here in new jersey that i thought would have it it is called the union pork store for god's sakes but i asked and it is a german pork store so when i asked um do you have guanciale he looked at his wife, his wife looked at, her, at him, and he turned to me and goes, no. And I said, oh, well then I'll take your pancetta, please. You know, um, But it's great, you take the pancetta, I got a nice three inch slice of it, and you basically cut it into cubes and then you put it into a food processor oh, and, and you make it um, similar to the consistency of like sausage. And then that's what you, you uh, kind of cook it in a pan and then you kind of make a roux and you know I'll, I'll uh, fill you guys in once I have the uh, once, once this is over and we've eaten it and I can give you my review so yeah I'm just packing this in as tight as I can they do tell me that this should feed two people 
And obviously you want to keep these pieces of pasta wide open because when you pour the sauce on top, that's what's going to happen. And the other important thing is, notice I have it in a nonstick pan, so you want to build it in a nonstick pan. Yes, Lynn? Uh, Chris Howard, um, he asked where you got the mold. So the mold, um, I could have gone online if I had planned ahead and gotten an actual ring mold. Um, but, uh, you know, once I get that bug in my head about doing something, eh, my patience kind of goes out the window. So I went to Marshall's and they had some spring form pans and they had, this was a fine mesh strainer, also known as a Tammy. Uh, six inches is what I was looking for. They happened to have the six inch strainer and I came home and I cut the screen out and uh, made myself a six inch ring mold. I'm hoping that this really works because then I can make it on a bigger scale and feed a more people. All right, so I think that's gonna be pretty tight. And I don't think I'm gonna really be able to fit any more in here. And some of them are not as even as the others. You know, they're different sizes. Um, and again, the, it's really important that you don't buy the ZD that is cut at an angle. You want the, you want the flat cut like this and that surface you want sitting on the pan because you're going to get it nice and crispy. All right, so let me refer to the recipe now. And so Scott, asks, Scott is asking if you have a current cookbook on sale. Nope. Nope. And we also have Dave Lagursia. So it's telling me, hi Dave, completely fill up the mold. Make sure all the bottom tips are contacting the skillet if there are clumps of cheese left in the bowl, pile it on top. So there's more than clumps of cheese. There is lots of pasta left, which will make a great lunch tomorrow. Um, let's see. We turn the skillet to a medium low heat. I'm gonna put some cheese. I don't have any extra cheese, fine. I'm gonna put, uh, see if I can get some clumps out of here. I can just put them on top. Oh yeah, here's a nice piece. So I'm just taking the extra cheese out. I'm putting this on medium. Let's see where we go with this recipe. It's really not difficult. You know, the sauce, uh, will tell you, is uh, porky. It starts out with the pancetta, but it is, a, it is a standard bechamel sauce. Bechamel is basically a thickened milk sauce. You are making a roux, fat and flour, and then you are pouring in milk and stirring it, bringing it to a boil, and it thickens. All right, let's see here. This I'm gonna put aside. I'm gonna take my little glove off. Here's another piece of cheese. They want me to cover it so the cheese melts. Okay, cover it, I shall. Sort of. Sort of, all right. Do another plan. It's in restaurants a lot when you're steaming clams and stuff. Cover with another pan. And just in case you guys want to know how many pots and pans we have, I'm, I'm, I'm taking you. I'm not at all embarrassed. So I have to be a, have to practice my craft. I need those pots and pans. They go back to you. All right. So lid on, cheese melting. Cook until the bottom layer is golden brown and crispy. About five minutes. You can check gently by lifting the mold. Now let me get a plate. So Scott, just keep watching Eric and you can cook just like him. Correct. We have the black plates on there, right here. I'm gonna try it again on a black plate. Because I think All it'll right. look good on a black plate. There he comes. All right, I'm putting it on here because I want to warm it up a little bit. I'm gonna clean up. This is really cool. So let me show you the pasta again. Coming back over here. This is the pasta, about an inch and a half, I guess. They had shorter ones, but I knew I wanted to use longer ones. And flat cut. And so this is a, actually a very uh, budget-friendly meal. It's, uh, none of the ingredients were expensive. I probably could have bought half the pancetta that I bought, but it's nice to have a little extra pancetta for 
later use. So I've got some stuff over here. So Paul Taboni, when are you going to make Sunday sauce with meatballs, spare ribs, and Italian sausage? Oh, yes. So as you can imagine, I, you know, I'm gonna stray away from the recipe. I've got all this bechamel sauce here with the pork in it. I'm just gonna pour a little bit on top. I want, I want it to be a little juicier. So that's going in there. Why not? So I typically will follow a recipe verbatim first time and then see where I would like to change it and make it my own. And, uh, but I, you know, I love what uh, Jacques Papin said about recipes. You never make the, the recipe the same twice. So I could follow this recipe verbatim, make it exactly how it's written. And then I can go the second time and make the recipe again, verbatim, but because of the variables in, in the the ingredients, like if you're using tomatoes as an ingredient, for instance, you'll make it once and it is absolutely delicious. The next time you make it, the tomatoes might not be as sweet. They may be a little more acidic. The, you know, the cheese may be a little bit stronger or whatever other ingredients. The ingredients are never the same. So, you know, recipes are just a guide. You know, use them as a guide, do it verbatim, see if it works. If it's a complete failure, you may want to just move on from that recipe. But if it works for the most part, and you know, it says a teaspoon of ground uh, green cardamom, that's what I use in here today. Uh, or it said a quarter teaspoon or a half teaspoon. If I like more prevalent flavor of green cardamom, I'll use a little bit more. So you can make adjustments as you go on the fly. You know, this is, uh, it's not rocket science. You know, once you know technique, and they told me this in culinary school about making a cream soup. Once you know how to make one cream soup, you know how to make a hundred. Because this, the technique is exactly the same, you're just changing up the ingredients. So, uh, you know, so that's, that's pretty cool. Will you be posting a link to the recipe? I can post a link to the recipe, for that, sure. That'll help you out, Scott. Yeah. Yeah, so it's basically, I took my time, I uh, made the bechamel, you can do that ahead of time. I made the, I cooked the pasta before we went live. You know, that kind of thing. Waited for him to get home. Let's see what it's we busy, got busy here. day. Ooh, Ooh look at that. going close again. Yeah, so I want that bechamel. You can see it bubbling. I'm guessing that that is turning brown on the bottom, as it should. How long does it cook like this? Uh, it said five minutes. I can see that it is browning. I'm going to get a little offset spatula and see if we can take a little peek underneath. Because what you want it to do, you want this whole thing to create a crust on the bottom. We need to make sure we change out those lights. Yeah, I need more. Yeah. I need more crust. Change out which lights, honey? Uh, the ones that glare on your food. Oh, okay. Want me to turn it down a little? No, that's better. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, so this is taking a little bit longer to crisp up, so I'm just going to keep going. It's going to be awesome. So now what you're going to do is, when, the, when you're done, you're basically going to put the plate on there, invert the whole thing, and... Uh, Will all the butter then come out with it? Well, I was thinking that same thing. I, makes, I may uh, pick up some of the butter with some paper towel, you know, just to soak it up so I don't get burned. You know, just something like this. Okay. Blot it. Get rid of some of it. But I can see that the cheese is definitely creating a crust. Awesome! It's going to be fantastic. Turn that up just a little bit. I want to look at it again. Are you coming in? Yeah, let's see if we can get in there. Oh yeah, looking awesome. And Chris, well, How Chris Howard loves nutmeg in his bechamel sauce. Me too. So this has nutmeg and green cardamom. Uh, nutmeg, green cardamom, a little sounds salt, like, white pepper, black pepper. Other than the white and black pepper, it sounds like my chai latte. Oh yeah, almost. One more blot of the oil. 
We don't need visit to the ER tonight. Do we, honey? Uh, Alex is recommending a broader spatula. Yes. Well, I like it because it's a uh, it's offset. I don't have a larger offset. All right, so. And want to review again what you're making? Yes, honeycomb macaroni with a porky cream sauce. So I have the plate on there. It's going to invert the whole thing. I am going to do it by the sink. Ready? Booyah! Oh, wow. Le voila. Look at that. That, that is really cool. Bad. Well, let's see if the sides all stick together. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully not. Well, you, well, no, I meant the sides of the pasta, yeah. not the container. All right. Let's see. Does it say I should let it cool? Yeah, let the surface cool and crisp for 30 seconds, then remove the mold and serve immediately. I believe. Which means... Forks. I gotta piss you guys off again. Forks are at the ready. And guys, just look how how quickly it all was put together. So it's pretty cool. So uh, just just wait wait till you see it when it's. The, the I'm gonna get a little off. paring knife. All right. Sorry, guys. Doesn't say that in the directions. That it's gonna stick. No, it's just the crust on the bottom. The now right. top. The now top. <laughs> From Julie. Yummy. And Alex, gorgeous chef. Are you calling my boyfriend gorgeous, Alex? Oh, uh, shucks. All right. Here we go. Uh oh. Come on. Hey. Huh. That's my daughter. You want to send her to voicemail? Yeah, I'll send her in on the Facebook Live. Hi, Soph! Hi, uh, you're on Facebook Live. Oh, really? Say hi to everybody. Hello! I'm making the pasta. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You're on Facebook Live right now? Right now. Hi, Facebook! <laughs> on the Grateful Chef group. So I'm gonna call you back. Okay. All right. I can't wait to hear and see how it goes. So let's go well, watch. we're having a little bit of trouble. It's coming out of the mold. Scott says hello to Sophie. Scott says hello to you, Soph. Hello, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie's in Seattle, the Where? Emerald City. I'm cooking shrimp tacos for dinner. Awesome shrimp tacos. So the apple has not fallen far from the tree. Yes. So, oh, yeah. so Paul Boney is also saying hi. Yes, Paul has been. Yep. Paul has seen every one of my Facebook Live cooking shows. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, I'm making an heirloom tomato pineapple salsa with red onion and cilantro. So. All right. So I don't know, guys, if this is my mold that's creating the problem, because there's a little lip on the bottom. There we go. So just gotta work it, and it's hot. Anyway. <laughs> Bye. I'll talk to you later, Dad. All right. Bye. Real live cooking. Let's see. Well, let's see if it sticks together. Oh, I think we're going to need a different pan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know what the problem is. I should have inverted the mold. So this is absolutely the issue is with my makeshift mold. So we're going to have to do what I call redemption. Um, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. See, so here it is a lip. Uh, right got in, ripped up the sides of your yeah. pasta. So I ripped it up because, you know, I think That's I'm, not bad. I'm going to call this recipe a success, but my mold, it was a failure. But just give you guys a close look at the pretty side, but you can also see where it ripped it up. But that's how it looks. Mm. That is amazing. So, yes, it will work. And I just can't wait. So we're going to dig right. in. So let's grab a little piece like mm. that. Oh, and it's so hot. Is it gooey? But here you can see you got cheesy, yummy, porky, delicious. I'm gonna make sure the pasta's cooked. 
Mm. Great job from Scott. Awesome. Uh, Karen. This would be great with, I'm gonna show you a product that I love. K In Karen. my spice cabinet. I'm not sure why Karen Sonberger just called you a hoe. Really? Well, yeah. she's known me a long time, she's allowed. So this would be great with some truffles. So I know a lot of people use truffle oil. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on here. This oh, is a, again, this. I'm not endorsed by any of the products that I talk to you guys about. This is just stuff I love. This is from Sabatino Tartuffi. It is truffle zest, yeah, okay? This in is in, it's the consistency of kind of rubbed sage. And when you take the lid off of this jar, it fully engulfs the room. It smells so good. So here. this is, I have a half a jar left. I probably had this for uh, maybe a year. It lasts a long time. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of sprinkle on here. Anyway. And you can put this on eggs. You can Oops. put on everything. I made mashed potatoes. You put a little of this in. Yes, a lot of times some of the lower quality truffle oil has other ingredients in it. Um, this is truffle essence. Um, I'm going to tell you what it has. Natural flavor. It's got carob powder, I'm guessing, for consistency. Salt, black summer truffle, and flavors. It's a vegan product. It's, uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. If you could smell it in here. So just... Uh, did you show my spice cabinet, honey? Oh, yeah. That's, That's how we cook what we cook. There we go. Gotta have everything. So anyway, that's it. I want to, uh, we're going to go ahead and eat this meal. I figured I'd do an impromptu little uh, Facebook Live on the oh. group. And Fiona just asked, where do we get the essence? The essence you can buy on Amazon. Thank you, Fiona. Good question. That's where I get it, Amazon. It's not super expensive. goes a long way. And it is fantastic. Truffle everything. I like it so much better than truffle oil. Yeah, me too. So again, honeycomb. Mmm, the truffles, great. Honeycomb macaroni with porky cream sauce, also known as bechamel, made with guanciale or pancetta. It's really awesome. Try this. I'm going to do a redemption with a different mold. I'm going to actually get the right kind of mold. And uh, that's it. Have a great night, everybody. Enjoy, eat well, live well, be well. And we'll see you on the next Grateful Chef video. Peace.